Hey, everybody. Welcome back today to Retro Tech. And, you know, it's a new year here in 2021, and I always like to take this time to kind of reflect on things I have done in the past uh, year and maybe see if there's some things I can improve. And one of the things I was thinking about is what can I do to actually maybe make my uh, videos here a little bit more helpful and kind of the next level that has been, you know, festering in the back of my mind for <laughs> probably the last, I don't know, six months or so has actually been more on the side of troubleshooting. So if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you notice a lot of my videos will have more of an approach to repair on these machines. A lot of times we're going in and we're just repairing and replacing tons of parts or swapping out parts if we're conveniently fortunate to have a replacement part. But what if we don't have that option or what if we really need to figure out what's causing the exact issue uh, today, I'm going to do a first step towards that new goal, and we're going to have a video where we're going to do some troubleshooting, and we're going to try to figure out what is causing a specific uh, PVM, it's 8041Q, to not have the red color on the screen. And so to do that, all you need really is some kind of a meter. This is nothing special. Um, as long as it reads DC voltage and continuity, which most of them will. Uh, but the other thing is, is this is the tube that we're, you know, dissecting and looking at. This is an eight inch tube in most of the Sony PVM eight inch versions. But again, we're going to look at how to pig figure out what's causing the color loss. Is it a board issue or is it a tube issue? Or is it a cold solder joint or maybe a component problem? Uh, that's what we're going to get into today. So without any more introduction, thanks again for joining me. And let's get right into the repair. All right, everyone. Here we've got a Sony PVM 8041Q that's been brought to the shop to get looked at. I'll go through kind of what's going on with it. So this one was bought off eBay by somebody locally for $70. And that included shipping. But... It didn't really power on from AC. We'll go through and show you that test here in a second. And um, then we're going to try some other tests and just see what actually needs to be done here. Uh, the first thing, again, is we're going to try and power this on, but I did want to show you kind of a rigging that the uh, owner had done to get power into the monitor to test it just to see if it would even work. And... What I want you to notice down here is this DC voltage. There's some cork in there to separate the two lines and just isolate them. Uh, and that actually plugs into, it looks to be an old, maybe power supply for something like your uh, computer. And this one outputs 12 volts DC, 5 amps, max 60 watts. So you could use this to convert your power to DC to power the monitor, which this is kind of this almost the same process that this is doing internally when you hook up an AC plug. So first let's start by just trying to plug in the AC power. Even though I doubt it's going to do anything, we'll see initially if we get any kind of response here. So it's obviously plugged in. I am getting some kind of noise, which is interesting. So there's some kind of reaction in that power supply, but it's not, it's not transmitting into actual stable power on the screen. Alright, let's turn that off, unplug it. Now let's try the homemade DC power supply. It's using the same exact plug. And then now let's see. And it sounds like it's normally powering up. The power light's on. I'm going to go ahead now and, and stick a video signal into input one and we'll see if we can get anything to pop up. Alright, so I was finally able to just get it to sync up and what it looks like is we don't have any red color right now. Just to confirm that, I'm going to go to the 240p test suite and I'm going to pull up color bars. And there's green, white, and blue, and our red is missing. Either the red color gun is out on the tube, or we have a solder joint problem. 
on the color board which is the board on this side so uh, at least we know that it does power on and I've got a replacement AC power supply that we're gonna swap into this what I don't know though is if the red color gun is out or if it's from a cold solder joint on the color processing board now I'm just gonna remove the shell I believe that we should be able to check a couple points maybe to see if red is coming and going when it's supposed to be going into the tube maybe we can check to see if we're getting any voltage on this pin connector down here if we are then we know the reds still being sent the signals being sent to the tube it's just not producing an image but if there's no signal no voltage on that line then uh, maybe that means that there's an interruption in the circuit for the red color so my plan is to maybe turn this thing on and connect a ground point and a red point see if we have any voltage reading on there and it's time to run some tests and again the very last point before it goes from the color processing board into the actual neck board is right along the side here you can actually follow where it's connecting based on the cable now it does appear that you know the solder on the red line does not look the best but it also doesn't look like it's breaking any continuity we'll check that after we can power it back off what I'm gonna do is I've got my meter set to voltage on DC and there's not actually a ground pin there's a bunch of other pins again this is live electricity so we want to be very careful but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probe with my positive on the red and then I'm going to just use the actual frame as my negative or my ground, I'm sorry, not my negative, but my ground for my negative probe. And I'm getting 72 plus a half a volt, about round in there, 72 and a half volts. And I'm going to take it off the red now and the green is a couple down. Be very careful where you probe, you don't want to short anything out incorrectly. But it's kind of close to that. It's a little bit lower on the voltage, 74. And the bottom pin is blue. Let's try that one, 77. So what that means is the colors being generated all the way up to this point. We can run the same test to see if we're going to have continuity. We can check continuity between our red point here and our red point on the back of the tube. And that would be a little bit safer with our power off. What I'm going to do now is, is check the continuity between these two points by turning it off, unplugging everything, and now we can check our continuity between these two points. So we'll change our meter over to just measure continuity. And then We'll measure the continuity between blue, green, and red. So the red one's down here on the far end. We'll just... So we're definitely getting our current there. Let's try green. Green is that one. And this one and then blue finally let's try it okay so blue's gone through there too see check a couple spots and make sure we still got continuity along that red line inside of here on the actual board which it appears we do so I don't see any obvious spots on the board with the solder being bad so what we're going to do is we're going to take some parts now from another salvaged 8040 including the power supply and the tube and we'll swap those out and hopefully just hooking that up will cause the color to come back because again we're getting current into the tube and it's supposed to be showing red but it's not so you know a little troubleshooting i mean hopefully it means that we're we're on the right track.
Now, before I go in and switch out the tube and the deflection yoke and flyback, I'd like to try one thing. I've got my new replacement power supply here, so it would be nice to go ahead and install this in place of this old one, and then we can test that power supply, make sure it powers on, and still see if the tube shows only you know, green and blue, which it should. That shouldn't have changed it, not the power supply. So we can, but we can at least test the power supply, but at the same time, I want to change out this neck board because that could have either a cold solder joint on it or the resistor on the red line could actually have failed. And that could be the reason that there's no red current going through there. So the easiest thing is to take and use the parts again from that 8040. It has the same board back here. Now obviously the, the design is, is slightly different, just the actual look of the board, but it's the same build out, same setup and everything. And even the part numbers on it match. Just to go ahead and start undoing some of these things on this current neck board here. You can just pop off these from the back of the flyback, which control the convergence and focus. Just wiggle that a little bit and pull the neck board out and off. And all of these same connection cables will plug into either one of these for our test. First thing I want to do is test the power. So that's plugged in through the AC power supply and we have normal power up. Now let's turn on our console and see if we have any... Let's see, so no. The red color is still out on there. So it's not the neck board. There's no problem with this neck board. And there's no problem with our other neck board, it looks like. So, still looking at a tube swap on here. But the power supply switch is working, and that's good. We just need to get that other tube in here. I'm about ready to swap the tube out, but I wanted to show you something that this one is not like the other 8 series, where it actually has a anode cap that is similar to all the others that can just be popped off on its own and it doesn't actually need to have the whole setup back here changed out so we can just change the tube and the yoke and that can come from another monitor that either is the same or you can cut the other assembly off if you don't need it from your 80 spare monitor and this one also accepts the same tube from like the 8020 which is a different older monitor but it has the same just ring anode same build out for the CRT so it's a good substitute I've removed our bezel and now what I need to do is just get these four nuts off these bolts. You can't usually get them started with your hand, but they usually just take a small crank and then they are pretty loose. So don't over tighten them. You just don't want to, you don't want to uh, basically slightly hand, they're going to be slightly hand tightened. So we're going to reconnect our cap. That may need a little bit more.
need to plug in the rest of the neck board. We also need to plug in this. So let's get that done. Well, here we go. The only thing disconnected is the tally light. So let's just hope for the best. Power and everything is coming on the screen. Boom. Yes. Red, green, blue. That was it. Our troubleshooting was right, and it was the tube. The red gun was out on it. Now, I've seen that happen before. I'm not sure what it is about the red specifically that goes out, but that seems to be the most common color I see out on tubes is red. Now, I'm working on calibrating my screen. Everything's going good. So I am seeing some purity problem in this corner up here. Let's go to a solid screen. So we're going to try to degauss this. It's a little bit better still. So now that I've got that still there, I can try and remove some of these convergence strips in that corner. So there are quite a few. And then I could try to introduce a magnet to the back. Sometimes there are those, so that might work. Uh, so I'm going to have to work on that for a little bit to see if I can get that hue to come back to red. Alright, so we're pretty well ready to finish up on this little monitor. It just needs a little cleaning and then we can put it back together. But what I want to do is just go through one last look at the 240p test suite. You notice I did get rid of a lot of that purity issue on the side by adding a purity magnet. So behind here against the yoke I just epoxied in. Well, not epoxy. I use I use this for some of these instances. This is black RTV silicone. That's what I, what I use to secure that little magnet in case it needs to be removed or moved. Sometimes it's hard to tell when you put a new tube in. It can take a few cycles and hours to get its purity completely settled. Uh, but that looks big enough to make an adjustment and add that magnet. And that's not unusual to have at least one, sometimes two, purity magnets on these tubes, even the smaller ones. pretty much eliminated all the purity issues that were over here on this side. That just took some extra degaussing and this is one day later after the installation of that purity magnet and so it seems to have corrected the tube. Let's check red which was the worst. Looks pretty uniform red to me. Green looks great. Blue too. Now that I've finished up with the hardware repairs and adjustments I like to go through and check the calibration screens one last time to make sure that no more adjustments need to be made in order to get this to the client or owner. Now we'll go through some details on this specific model for you in case you're unfamiliar with the Sony PVM8041Q. Sony lists this as a fine pitch 8 inch Trinitron color monitor. It doesn't feature 250 TV lines and a comb filter for NTSC. Now again this video monitor does only support 240p and 480i as far as video resolutions. There are built-in inputs for composite S-video and then a component video input that can be switched to RGB with sync processing available. And it also does offer sync on green if that is needed. It does support NTSC, CCAM, PAL, and other formats for video. And it weighs almost 18 pounds. 
It does offer a flexible option for powering itself. I mean, there's a battery input. It also accepts 12 volt DC power and standard AC power. And then that's multi-regional too. So there's a lot of swings between whether it can go down to 100 volts all the way up to 240 volts if you are in a different power region. It's a great test monitor to use in your lab or even as a side-by-side -side monitor for a larger 13 to 20 inch PVM. This is still a very portable PVM too, so if you need to move around with one, this is a good one to use. Now for the remainder of today's video, I've got a slideshow that shows you the donor PVM I used for the tube. This is not the power supply PVM that came from a 8040, but the tube did come from an older monitor, which is the 8221. And that one is from the late 80s and early 90s, and it only processes composite video. It does have external sync processing, but really nothing else. And so it's a great parts monitor in case you do need a tube because the tube matches the tube in the 8041Q series. So if you do need a tube, don't just think that you have to get an 804 to fit in this monitor. You can get one of these 8220s or 8221s. There's a lot of PVMs that use this same small 8 to 9 inch Trinitron tube in them. But that's going to do it for today's video. I really appreciate you joining me. And if you're interested in maybe getting a CRT repaired of your own and want more information on that, please do check out the links in the description of this video. I do have a lot more coming in 2021, so make sure you subscribe and stick with the channel. I appreciate you, and have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.